Now, to our My 70s guest this afternoon. At the beginning of this year, American singer-songwriter John Fogerty finally regained control of some of his best-known songs. With his band, Creedence Clearwater Revival, John wrote and produced such classics as Down on the Corner, Proud Mary and Bad Moon Rising, but lost the copyright when his former record company was sold in the 70s. Now he's hitting the road and playing live again on what he's calling the Celebration Tour, and he'll be here in the UK next week. John formed Creedence Clearwater Revival in the late 60s, and as well as selling millions of records with them, he's also a Grammy Award winner and has been inducted into the US Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I spoke to John recently from his home in LA before he set off on the tour. And you can hear our chat after this, up around the bend from the 1970 album Cosmos Factory. Creedence Clearwater Revival and Up Around the Bend. And on the line, the man who created the sound and wrote all the songs, uh, the one and only John Fogarty. Uh, hello, John. How are you? I'm good, Johnny. Hello to you. Now, you've been having quite a year. How has the celebration tour been going? Oh, wonderful. You know, it. it <laughs> when you're doing something positive and you just feel good about life in general, it's just a, a dream to be playing music this way. And you've got uh, two of your sons in the band. Yes, I have Shane and Tyler. It's just delightful to be able to present music to our fans this way. Of course, my wife is always along, and sometimes even uh, the boys' sisters, Kelsey and uh, Lindsay. So it it's quite a family deal. Now, you had an amazing period with Credence of a run of hit singles and hit albums. So take us back to the beginning. It kind of started with a cover version of Susie Q that got played quite a lot in San Francisco. Before that time, the fellas and I had been various incarnations, various names as well, but we had made several singles, most of which a smattering of, of airplay and success, but not much. And kind of out of desperation, I thought, well, let's do a cover of a song we already know is good rather than trying to write our own. And I ended up sort of tricking it out, you know, uh, trying to put all the psychedelic stuff I could think of into the track. And it worked quite well. They, there was no release single. It was just a tape that we had. And the station started playing that. And of course, that one thing led to another. Eventually, a single was released. And Susie Q did really well in 1968. Now, that then followed all these great hit records like Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, Down on the Corner. It's a great name for the band, shortened very often as CTR. How do you come up with that name? <laughs> well, we had been scratching our head for several months after we finally convinced the new ownership of the record label that we, we really didn't want to be with something that had been foisted on us and we hated it. And it was Christmas Eve of 1967, and I saw a couple of commercials on television, One of the first of which was this beer commercial, and it showed these scenes of uh, an enchanted forest and a little babbling brook, very green, you know, in color. And right after that was a commercial, uh, anti-pollution commercial, and it showed things like styrofoam cups and cigarette butts clogging up a... Uh, a little stream, and of course this was in black and white, quite shocking after the beautiful forest scene. And the uh, anti-pollution commercial said something like, if you want to change things, write to Clean Water Washington. And the idea of clean water kind of stuck in my head, and I started playing around with that and finally came up with clear water. And I had remembered a... Uh, name we had toyed with a little bit but it d didn't seem to work at the time and that was credence and i stuck those two things together wow credence clearwater sounded pretty great i know at the time i was trying to have a renewed sense of energy among uh, the fellas in my band and eventually revival popped into my head i, I know it was a mouthful to say credence clearwater revival <laughs> but it was uh, perfect at the time it was how i felt what are your memories of playing the Royal Albert Hall? 
Uh, very exciting and a little bit confusing. It was a lifelong dream, of course, after hearing about the Beatles and other bands being in that very historic venue. We were thrilled to be out there in front of a British audience and playing our songs. Now, some uh, wonderful news this uh, this year is that uh, uh, you, John Fogarty, have joined the Billions Club with the song Have You Ever Seen the Rain? Over one billion streams on Spotify. One billion. That's pretty amazing. Yes. I mean, I'm kind of staggered by the whole thing, tell you the truth. I'm not sure I can even imagine what a billion is, except when I look up in the night sky and see all the billions and billions of stars, of course. And to think that the Spotify thing represents, you know, the modern age, the streaming age. So this all happened quite recently. It's quite incredible, John, that a song you wrote and recorded 52 years ago uh, should have such wide appeal now all over the world. Well, I'm very lucky. I just take all of this uh, with a great sense of gratitude now. You know, having gone through the dark woods, as it were, and survived various challenges that were sent my way, I'm living the dream now. It's it's just wonderful that all of this has come back to me, and, and I'm taking it with a very joyful heart. You know, to have smooth sailing at this point is a wonderful thing. That's Have You Ever Seen the Rain by Credence Clearwater Revival. And a writer, singer, a ranger, producer, John Fogarty uh, is on the line. Now, I've heard it said that you were reluctant when playing live to play old Credence songs. But it was in Los Angeles, so you were doing a gig. And I, somebody suggested there's quite a star-studded audience there. And said, listen, you've got to start playing these songs, John. Otherwise, people would think Proud, Proud Mary was you know, written by Ike and Tina Turner. Well, that was a wonderful night. That was a, a kind of a famous club here in Los Angeles called the Palomino. A lot of people have been there. I, I've actually had seen uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and another show I saw was Albert King in that little club. And I happened to go that night to see Taj Mahal and lo and behold, Bob Dylan and George Harrison were there. I, I pinch myself sometimes at some of these wonderful things that have happened to me. But anyway, I, I'm in the room there watching Taj Mahal, and suddenly Bob Dylan gets up on stage, and then George Harrison joins him up on stage with uh, Taj Mahal. And if, one of the few times in my life that I've actually looked around and said, oh, my gosh, I hope they have one more guitar because I'd sure like to be up there with those guys. I eventually got up there and was singing along and, I think George had played Honey Don't. Uh, Bob had played one of his own songs. And there was this sort of pregnant pause, uh, the audience saying, well, John, why don't you do Proud Mary? And this was during a time when I wasn't doing those uh, songs I had made famous with Credence. And Bob Dylan turns to me and indeed he says in a kind of a low whisper, well, and, and a little bit of a, jab in my ribs as well an elbow in the ribs he says well john if you don't sing proud mary everybody's gonna think it's a tina turner song <laughs> well he's a songwriter and he knew how to get my goat you know and and that was irrefutable logic coming from Bob Dylan. <laughs> so certainly that night i did proud mary brilliant and there's another great song that was played worldwide to kick off the live aid concert that not everybody realizes you wrote the song, and that was from your 1975 solo album, your second solo album, just called John Fogarty. And that was rocking all over the world. Yes, that was such a treat to have Status Quo uh, record that song and have it become a, a major hit. You know, that was a time, again, when I was <laughs> kind of stuck in the dark woods, a very down period in my life and career, but uh, it was wonderful to have one of my songs shoot all the way up to the top even at a time when i wasn't uh, actively engaged in showbiz well it's going to be wonderful to see you and your band playing some gigs in the uk you'll be at manchester arena 
on the 25th of May and then at the O2 in London on the 29th of May. Are you looking forward to playing uh, in the UK again? Oh, very much. Uh, it's been much too long. The world has really changed, especially since the pandemic. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting back to normal again and playing rock and roll. Brilliant. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you. And thanks for joining us this afternoon. Well, thank you, Johnny. Nice to talk to you. And there it is. And just to remind you, he wrote it. Uh, John Fogarty, rocking all over the world, from his self-titled solo album that came out in 1975. And my thanks again to John, lovely bloke, and can't wait to see his shows over here in the UK. John Fogarty brings his celebration tour to the UK next week. He's playing Manchester Arena on the 25th of May and then the O2 in London on the 29th. His sons, Shane and Tyler, also have their own band called Hearty Ha, and they'll be playing support to their dad at both shows. And what a lovely guy John Fogarty is.